We are not competing with um, Batik Air we, uh, or Air Asia. No names mentioned, but uh, <laughs> the word is. Uh, I they, will mention we, them. We are not competing with uh, Malaysian-based carriers. Okay. We are now competing with the likes of Singapore Airlines, and that comes uh, that that circles back to our conversation earlier. How am I going to compete with Singapore Airlines, which yes. is far superior? Or even Qatar. I mean, you look at their Precisely. planes, right? And look at their lounges. Precisely. They look like five-star hotels. Precisely. And I've been to the Malaysian Airlines lounge, and I'm sorry, it just, it just is not the same. Of course. Of course, as I said, over the last two decades, we were not able to reinvest. I'm Wong Xiaoling and this is The Breakfast Grill. In 2023, the Malaysian aviation industry suffered another turbulent year as it continues to find its feet post-pandemic. We witnessed the closing of a barely one-year-old airline. Another still remains in PN17 status. But will the expected full recovery in airline passenger numbers in 2024 be that turning point and see profitability for some players? Questions we pose to Captain Izam Ismail, Group CEO of the Malaysian Aviation Group. Morning, Captain. Thanks for joining us on the Breakfast Grill again. We last spoke in June 2021, so much to catch up on. My first question, is MAG finally profitable and not just for that one lucky quarter? Good morning, Shaolin, and thank you for having me back here. I would imagine you will start off asking how am I, but <laughs> we start off with profitability. I'm all about the numbers, Captain, <laughs> yes. but yes. Um, it has been a checkered journey for, for Malaysia Airlines specifically and for the group MAG. Um, I have to say that 2023 has been a fantastic year. Uh, numbers are looking very good and no doubt that I cannot announce the numbers today because we have not finished our audit process yet. Um, revenue is up 30% uh, versus 2019 as baseline. Um, EBITDA is um, uh, sitting at about 2 billion, uh, which is, uh, I would say, uh, better than 2019 by more than 50%. Um, cash balance is still very strong, sitting at uh, close to 5 billion. This is driven through mostly through operations. And of course, um, we have to acknowledge that for the last two years, the airline industry is operating in a high yield environment. This yield, uh, high yield environment will subside, uh, Shaoning. Mm. So our crystal ball indicates that uh, our forecast, our consensus is by second half of this year, yield will start to deteriorate, driven by um, uh, more capacity at the marketplace. Okay, we'll come to that in a minute. But I, I do want to ask you about margins, right? Okay, just to give me a sense of what's going on at MAG because the business is notoriously challenging. Definitely. I think, yeah. you know, IETA expects 4.7 billion people to travel in 2024. Yes. But its Director General, Willie Walsh, warns that industry profits are still poor. So he estimates an average net margin of just... 2.7%. At best. At best. So At is best. MAG in line above or below industry numbers when it comes to Shawnee, this figure? Um, after the restructuring, we are able to reset, restabilize our balance sheet, our cost structure. Uh, fortunately, uh, fortunately, we are doing close to 2% margin. But I have to forewarn that um, the airline industry is very notorious, mm. very competitive. It's a very razor thin margin uh, environment that we are operating. So sometimes when people ask me or views about opening up an airline, I always like to joke, if you're a billionaire and you dream to be a millionaire, open up an airline. So margin will be, uh, will be uh, under pressure this year. Okay. Moving forward. Because Captain, if you ask anyone, would they be willing to, exactly your point, to invest in a business that generates profit margins less than the cost of capital? In an industry where you have high infrastructure costs, intense competition, and is subject to geopolitical risks, the answer would probably be no. So, you know, what is the investment case for MAG all about? Or is this really always going to be something about nation building? That's what MAG is. So, I mean, Malaysia Aviation Group is very clear in our purpose. First and foremost, we must be profitable. Uh, secondly, um, uh, most importantly, we must be part of the ecosystem that contribute to the nation. Malaysia Aviation Group is an idea that was mooted 100 years ago. To be exact, um, 22nd November 1922, an idea of facilitating trade and commerce uh, in the Federation State of Malay uh, back, back then. So today, uh, well, most of us know Malayan Airways in 1947, mm. so to speak, but people forgot the idea, the ambition 100 years, 10 decades ago. 
so I believe very strongly Malaysia Aviation Group, Malaysia Airlines specifically, must drive profitability, but at the same time, must not forget our responsibility of nation building. We are very key enabler of economic driver uh, for the country. Okay, and are there then new KPIs set for MEG from the sole shareholder Kazana? After all, they pumped in billions over the last few decades, and even the managing director, Dato Amiro Faisal, has pledged support for the next few years. And I like his choice of words. It's a blessing that they are cash positive, but I would imagine more is expected of MAG. Definitely, um, the KPIs by shareholder is, is very clear. First and foremost, you have to be profitable. And you have to be profitable in the context of being efficient, um, well-managed costs, uh, your, your financial cost management and so forth. But um, the overarching focus is actually to be part and instigate or contribute to what we spoke about just now, mm. nation building. Um, I, I am blessed, uh, Shaoning, that my shareholder, uh, my board of directors are very active very active, they are on the grounds with me, uh, they, they provide challenges and they give very strong steer. So I don't have a set of shareholder or board members who just attend board meetings on a monthly basis. They are very committed and invested in the growth and the uh, sustainability of Malaysia Aviation Group. So, which begs the question, on a day-to-day -day basis though, how much of a free reign are you given to run in MAG? Um, Shawning, to be honest, um, I would say 99%. Okay. There, there's no such thing as 100% uh, freedom, so to speak. Um, a shareholder and board um, give me complete freedom. Okay, so there was no, they were on board uh, and there were shareholder support to the to end, let's say, the catering contract with Brahmins despite the expected fallout that followed? Yes, coming back to the catering issue, which I'm not able to uh, discuss in mm. detail because we're currently still under NDA, right? Um, it is a painful, it is a painful transition, but we went in with our eyes wide open. Shouting in the course of uh, my career as a CEO in Malaysia Aviation Group or Malaysia Airline, uh, I believe very strongly the balance sheet need to be reset uh, aggressively. And we need to attain a very agile balance sheet, cost structure. And that entails of renegotiating um, contracts which is not um, benefiting the group. Um, you know, in 2020, we went through uh, financial restructuring, 75 creditors. Subsequent to that, we went on further, um, uh, which is outside um, the 75 creditor pool. And today, what it is, no doubt the pain, the likes of our catering issue recently, has resulted in a very agile organization, able to change direction in a very fast manner, mm. to, a to adapt to uh, geopolitics, uh, environment, macroeconomics, uh, to a certain extent. You know, when, when you see a region is not performing, you can actually shift you can cut those roots immediately? Not really cut because we have a responsibility to the nation. Okay. We, we would probably reduce frequencies, right? Maintain relevancy, but put more focus um, into, uh, into regions like India, for example. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when we spoke about uh, razor margin, a uh, very thin margin business, so it's very important that the group is very clear on routes that we have to deploy. And it has, uh, it has to meet certain variable cost component. Obviously, when you deploy, to, you deploy a, route, a flight on a route, you want to achieve, you want to achieve total cost recovery. Mm. But uh, that is very key. So the, the group has, uh, I, I, be, I would say over the last uh, three years, they have developed this dynamics and discipline of ascertaining whether that route is profitable or not. Case in point, if you remember early last year, we pulled out from Brisbane. Yes. Right. So Brisbane is not uh, is not making money. So we took that capacity and we put it to Bangladesh. So that's how the, the, the organization is agile. So this is at the back of a very strong, stable balance sheet per se. So no more vanity projects for MAG? I like hope flying not. to Buenos Aires? No, please, uh, <laughs> Shaoning. Um, so c coming back to the likes of Buenos Aires or your favourite destination, Paris maybe, <laughs> yes. uh, Shaoning. Um, you know, Malaysia Aviation Group, we believe very strongly in partnership, right? Um, 
Today, we are in deep, a deep partnership with many airlines, especially our One World partners, and predominantly um, the likes of Qatar, Japan Airlines. So with these uh, British Airways, American Airlines, with this airlines uh, partnership, we are able to get you to 1,000 over this destination. Paris, for example, Shaoning, we, we can get you to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they will involve a stopover. But, that, but, but, uh, <laughs> but Shaoning, uh, I will not discount that Malaysia airline will not fly to this route in the future. One right. day, maybe. Um, God willing, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> what about unfinished legacy problems uh, that you think MAG still needs to sort out? I mean, since becoming the CEO, you you resolved the union. There were, of course, now there are new catering contracts. What's left that will turn MAG into this consistent, lean, mean, profitable machine? Part of that long-term 2.0 business plan that, that runs till 2025. Legacy issues... The scale of the issues will always be there. Mm. First and foremost, um, when you run a business, the like of uh, of an airline business, you must very be very well aware of the macroeconomics, and then you must overlay that with your business economics. What most of us failed previously, and I wouldn't say in all, um, but we forgot the co the issue of social economics. Social economics is actually people. Okay. People, uh, employees, customers, and so forth. One of the one of the legacy issues that I I see prevalent in Malaysia Aviation Group, which probably will be my last run to fix, is to achieve consistency in service delivery to our customers. As you know, our checkered journey entail of very poor reinvestment into our product. Uh, Shining, um, you would have flown us. Um, Many times, I hope. Yes. Uh, our product is very tired. It is tired, is e even it, at the front of the plane. Yes, it's, it's very tired, admittedly. And that, uh, for, whatever, for, whatever, for whatever it is, um, it has uh, been a, a checkered journey for the last 20 years, mm. two decades. And reinvesting back to the product was very tough at that time. Um, Alhamdulillah, I mean, thank, thank God that um, for the last three years, we have been doing quite well strategically. And we have that money today. We have that funds to reinvest into the product. So henceforth, uh, you heard about our 313 new campaign. Uh, those are the products that uh, we are confident that will bring back what uh, consumers uh, would love to see. And I'm, I'm quite um, uh, happy to, to, to read uh, one media article a couple of days ago. 10 new airlines, 10 new products that to look forward to, and Malaysia Airlines is one of them. It'll be featured. Yes, and, and yeah. So, and the narrow body campaign uh, is another f tired fleet that we have to. So, Shaoning, reinvesting into fleet product is not overnight. It takes time. But the issue here is, okay, you've, I think you've ordered 60 new narrow body planes, <coughs> right? 60? No, 25. 25, okay. 25. But you have, of course, all these recent safety issues over the Boeing 737 of course. MAX 9 jets, which you've also ordered, and I think of they're course. all going to be delayed. No, we, we ordered MAX 8. Okay, MAX 8, the sorry. The one predominantly is an issue is MAX 9. Nine. Admittedly, um, So does this delay your fleet renewal program then, your plan? No, no. Um, so the first batch of... Um, 737 MAX 8 will be completed in circa 2026. So we do have a second phase of our narrow body re um, uh, replacement mm. plus growth that we're looking at. We will be running a campaign this quarter. Uh, we're agnostic to aircraft type. Uh, of course, uh, Shaoning, uh, being half Chinese, I'm very critical on commercial uh, offers on, on the table. And the guidance given by the board is that um, it must be commercially uh, what it must make commercial sense. Okay. Right. Um, yes. So fuel efficiency, fuel efficiency, capacity, all those play a uh, great most role. Most importantly, product. Okay. Right. Um, our CVP for the next uh, ten years, uh, Shaoning, is to recover back the lost ground um, that Malaysia Airlines has faced over the last two decades, mainly product, hardware. Uh, seats, cabin comfort, uh, food, in-flight dining, um, and um, most importantly, the service, the empathy that we uh, provide services to our customers. And I am proud that our cabin crew is actually performing fantastically. So, so Cap Captain, are you confident that MAG will get back its five-star Skytrax rating when it comes to customer service then? 
We plan our flag uh, to achieve that in 2025. Sometimes people ask me, was the last two years, 2022, 2023, a fluke for Malaysia <laughs> Airlines? Yeah, whether we are, we are at operating level, we are profitable in 2022, and I can't declare uh, the numbers for 2023. Um, we are looking at a very comfortable position. Uh, net income after tax is, um, I would say, um, 100% more that better than 2019. We are in a we are in a positive territory. Cash balance is uh, stable and strong. And coming back to your question, moving forward, will Malaysia Aviation Group be sustainable? So 2024 is really a year of credibility. Okay. To 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 cement that it was not a fluke. And so no doubt with uh, with a very i would say bleak um, macroeconomics environment um there are there will be huge challenges uh, fuel forex uh, geopolitics but there's seven election globally happening this year uh, united states of america is one of them mm. so that that uh, and then the ongoing conflict uh, ukraine russia Israeli, Palestine, U.S., China, that that doesn't play well as well at macroeconomic level. But as a business, you cannot accept that macroeconomic disadvantage as, ha, huh, nothing much I can do. You must find ways to navigate yourself around them. Yeah. Case in point, I give you an example. One, um, o o of course, the overcapacity um, in in the Malaysia and domestic and ASEAN market. So how does airline navigate around that, right? That's one. Number two, in pre-2015, 2016, circa that beyond, before that, the revenue contribu contribution to Malaysia airline then, 45% is from domestic market, top line revenue. 55% is from international market. So we, we realized that, hey, uh, we are competing with low-cost carriers, mm. right? Admittedly, they are the, the consumers, the market wants two products, low-cost and full-service carriers. So why should we be competing with low-cost carriers uh, where the cost base is more leaner than us? So we have actually shifted. For the last, I would say, more than say, two over years, we have shifted our inventory management to more of network flow, international flow. So Shaoning, today, for the last 27 months, our top line revenue is generated by international market is 90%. Okay. Domestic is 10%. So to be honest... And that's uh, your competitive advantage. Precisely. So we are not competing with... Um, Batik Air Vin, uh, or Air Asia. No names mentioned, but uh, <laughs> the word is... Uh, I will mention we, them. We are not competing with uh, Malaysian-based carriers. Okay. We are now competing with the likes of Singapore Airlines. And that comes... Uh, that, that circles back to our conversation earlier. How am I going to compete with Singapore Airlines, which yes. is far superior? Or even Qatar. I mean, you look at their Precisely. planes, right? And look at their lounges. Precisely. They look like five-star hotels. Precisely. And I've been to the Malaysian Airlines lounge, and I'm sorry, it just, it just is not the same. Of course. Of course, as I said, over the last two decades, we were not able to reinvest. But, Shaoning, I am confident with the strategy that we put in place. Mm. Um, Malaysia Air Vision Group, Malaysia Airlines specifically, will get there. Okay. So, we have a vision. Um, we have planned our flag by 2030. Uh, milestone is 2025 that we would uh, probably we are, we are, we are, we are targeting for the be, to be the best improved airline um, and hopefully regain our status as our cabin services and be top 10 globally by 2030. But Captain that, is that, that requires a lot of uh, discipline, razor sharp focus, uh, discipline in execution, and smartly investing uh, our money to where it matters most. But do you think that the current business model is really the right one for long term survivability? I know all about the laser focus. That's important, and of course, you're part of the One World Alliance, but. For the longer term, would you consider, uh, or maybe your shareholders will consider a stake sale to a Middle Eastern airline like Qatar, where you already have a very strong relationship, <coughs> or perhaps even a listing again so you can tap capital markets for expansion? Because yes, your cash balance, $5 billion, nice. But as we know, cash burn <laughs> can be very high in times of need. Yeah, especially when market is um, not disciplined. Yes. Right. So, uh, Shaoning, to answer your question, um, 
uh, whether there's, there's foreign investors um, look, being looked at by our shareholders, uh, I don't have those answers, um, but I wouldn't discount that it shouldn't be thought of. Mm. Uh, you know, synergy of uh, strong partners is also key, but you want partners to have a stake or a skin in the game as well. Um, listing, you know, my first year as a CEO, one of my ambition is to release Malaysia Airlines uh, into the stock market. But today, uh, my view has changed slightly. And why is that so? Uh, so the, the, the thing is here is that speed of execution, speed of decision making is faster as a private entity. And what is, what is Malaysia Airlines focus? Mm. Is it to raise capital and make money from the market or uh, nation building? So this is the, where I struggle. And at this current point, I might change my mind tomorrow, but I felt that listing is probably my lowest priority. Today. And your shareholders support that? Um, because if you need funding, you might have to go precisely. back to them, which you but did during COVID, right? To, to be honest, there, there is no deep conversation on that matter with the shareholder. For the moment. For the moment. And uh, Captain, let's talk about the opportunities, okay? So if you say, you know, you're going to have a fleet renewal. <coughs> and for me, okay, that's going to be a bit of a challenge because as we read in the press, every airline is ordering new planes. In yes. fact, in Asia... 45,000 um, new aeroplanes uh, in the next 20 years. Exactly. So yeah. how are you going to compete with all these new, well, these nice, everybody's going to get fleet renewal at, at the same time. Yes. So really, what are the opportunities here? Is it going to be new routes? How, how do you, how much more can MAG grow? So uh, uh, circling back to what I spoke about just now, comp competition at the marketplace, especially in the global theatre, will be very stiff. Mm. Right, and it is very important that Malaysia Airlines, specifically here, as as um, the mainline air, uh, uh, company in MAG, must be very clear in our product. So, number one, we need to reinvest on our product. We need to leapfrog, quantum leap, our services offering. And now, with the likes of major airlines coming in uh, with new aeroplane orders, so. Does Malaysia Airline have to grow to a certain extent? Yes, uh, we do have to grow, but smartly. And this is where, circling back what I mentioned earlier, we must work very, very closely with our partners. Okay, and these partners, does it include even the likes of the Ministry of Tourism, Malaysian yeah, airports? Because it's about selling Malaysia as the destination Correct. at the same time, right? And Correct. do we fail in that regard then? I have to say, um, to be honest, uh, to be fair, Minister of Transport is very supportive, uh, very supportive, and, and, and they're very clear. And YB Anthony Lok is very razor sharp on his focus moving forward. Uh, I applaud him for that. But um, uh, to be candid, um, the stakeholders, I would say the word Malaysia Inc., mm. to drive uh, tourism inbound into Malaysia, must work better. And harder. And harder. Cleverer? Let's say we compare ourselves with, you know, the likes of not, Thailand, not for example. Smarter. 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 Yeah, yeah. The collaboration of stakeholders, airports, immigration, customs, uh, rail, uh, ground transportation, hotels, must unite. Okay, because sometimes you, you get this feedback, right? It's very frustrating for tourists. They arrive and then, you know, our monorail isn't working. We're still using the bus. Precisely. For Precisely. what seems to be like a very long time. Precisely. Bags take a long time to arrive. Um getting to town, sometimes you get cheated by a taxi and, you know, all these issues. You answered all my questions, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> you, you answered f on, on my behalf. Uh, in summary, uh, in summary, um, the Minister of Transport, uh, Minister of Tourism is very clear and uh, they understand the issue. And I hope uh, at working level, at my level and the level below us, uh, all the senior executive of all the stakeholders really embrace, mm. have, um, I would say, one one vision that all of us drive towards. Okay, and Captain, your contract ends in November oh, no. this uh, year, right? Million dollar question. Of course. <laughs> uh, Shouting, shou shou I know where you're coming from. <laughs> no, because I have to ask, right? Succession planning is critical in any organisation. You have what, 12,000 employees? 12,000 employees. Yeah. Um, so what's the plan here? Is it going to, are you going to pick another MAG insider like yourself? Or will there be an external candidate that will be 
literally helicoptered in? No. Um, it is our ambition to groom from internal because um, it is very imperative that um, the long-term business plan continue its, uh, its, its journey, mm. right? So you cannot take some, someone or a team that is not in the current or for the last few years thought process of the way forward for Malaysia Airline. So it must be from Malaysia Vision Group. And um, the board um, uh, supports that idea and so, so does the shareholder. So have you identified a few <laughs> candidates? So um, the, the bench of senior leadership, the C-suites in Malaysia Aviation Group, average age is 46 years old. So they are able to take this organization 10 years ahead. Almost as long as you have worked in MAG. Yes, Shaoning. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've been here for 44 years. And why you might want to ask me, or probably you'll be asking me why I've never thought of leaving, mm. right? Shaoning, um, I come from a very poor family. Uh, my father earns 30 ringgit a month those days. Um, he's just a temporary clerk in the state government and in, 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 in Alostar. Uh, I live by the river, um, very hard life. I did, ha re did receive scholarship to, to do further studies, but the fast track out was to go to flying school. Okay. Um, and I owe it to this organization of taking me and my family out from po poverty and has forced the loyalty, I presume. And I, I'm, I'll do anything for this organization. Uh, you, cut, you cut my wrist and <laughs> the color of the blood will be probably blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so and if, when you look back at that 44-year career at MAG, what would you say are you most proud of? I'm proud of the diversity and equality that we have, we have created over the last six years. Um, I'm proud that um, the ownership, the sense of ownership by team members, not only at the senior leadership team, you can go down right up to the baggage handling team. Uh, everybody drive that ownership. Uh, I don't know what I did right along the way, mm. but probably, um, it, most importantly, is the sincerity and the honesty of, of your heart that you want the best for the organization. R remember when, when I spoke in the beginning about when, when you run a business, you need to be very well aware of macroeconomics. Yes. And you need to overlay business economics, but you must not leave behind the social economics portion. And the main portion of social economics is your people. Um, so I, I guess probably legacy, I don't know what legacy I'm leaving behind, but I am proud to be Malaysia Airlines. And retirement is looming for you? You will be no more extensions? I am, 60, I am 63 years old, Shaoning. <laughs> so I, it's a crossroad. It's a crossroad. On that note, thank you for your time. Today on The Breakfast Grill was Captain Isam Ismail, Group CEO of Malaysian Aviation Group. I'm Wong Shaoning, BFM 89.9.